Good morning, good morning. Thank you so much for joining me. This is the lovely podcast, The Endurance of Labor Laws. I am your lovely host, Leslie Sullivan, and today is episode 48, and we're going to take a look at the American Guild of Variety Artists. But first of all, I want to give a shout out to some of my listeners here. So I'm just going to go right down the list here. So good morning, New York, Oklahoma, Texas, Pennsylvania, Virginia, and Washington. Thank you so much for joining me. I greatly appreciate you guys. You guys are wonderful. Okay, so this is a short one again. It's connected to that um that AAAA, kind of hard to say, but the 4A union. So, it's connected to that, so there's not a lot of data on them, which I find kind of odd because they go so far back. So, again, this is American Guild of Variety Artists. It was founded in 1939. It's headquartered New York City, New York, has locations in the United States. As of 2014, they have 2,624 members. They have affiliation with the 4A credit union, not credit union, <laughs> labor union. <laughs> Thank you about banks. Um, so it's the AAAA, which is hard to say, and they are affiliated with the AFL-CIO. So this one says here, the American Guild of Variety Artists, also known as AGVA, is an American entertainment union representing performers in variety entertainment including circuses, Las Vegas showrooms and cabarets, comedy showcases, dance reviews, magic shows, theme park shows, and arena and auditorium extravaganzas. There is some overlap between the jurisdiction of AGVA and the Actors Equity. I was wondering about that because some of these um fields that they're describing in terms of the actual job roles, I was thinking that they overlap with this. So I would think that would lead to some territory issues, and that's probably why they're not saying much about it. And I think that's another reason why there's an issue with people that are in these particular types of unions. if they overlap in their work and their jurisdictions that might be why one union is saying you cannot take a non-union job while others are saying yes you can take a non-union type job i think it's just a, a jurisdiction war like a turf battle so it goes on to say the AGVA was the successor to the American Federation of Actors organized by actress and singer Sophie Tucker and others in the late 1930s and affiliated with the American Federation of Labor In 1939, the AFL dissolved the AFA due to financial irregularities and issued a new charter to AGVA, although some members went to Equity instead. In 1963, then AGVA president Joey Adams helped to finance and organize an August 5th variety show in Birmingham, Alabama, to raise funds for the August 28th march on Washington for Jobs and Freedom. Sharing the stage with Martin Luther King Jr. were Ray Charles, Nina Simone, Joe Lewis, Johnny Mathis, James Baldwin, and the Shirelles. In 1958 to 1959, the actress, singer, and tap dancer Penny Singleton became the first woman elected president of an AFL-CIO union. She was active in supporting the 1967 strike of the AGVA represented Rockets against Radio City Music Hall. Or sorry, not Rockets, Rockets, my apologies. It says here and was re-elected to the AGVA presidency in 1969. The most recent executive president was poet, songwriter, composer and singer Rod McEwen, who held the post for 19 years until his death in 2015. Now to me that is way too long to have someone be president or be an executive president of any organization. Like that needs to be changed like every 4 to 8 years. because otherwise you you've got a little dictatorship going on there and that person can be absolutely wonderful they can be a great individual but if you don't ever have someone new serve in that position then your numbers become stagnant your organization becomes stagnant stagnant like you need new leadership every now and then and i think that's why some of these actors and performers guilds and uh, unions they don't do very well it's because they don't have a change in leadership they just stay with the same old same old and guess what it doesn't really help them very much at all so it says here the AGVA's offices are in New York and Los Angeles and there's what's called the Georgia Award it says AGVA Entertainer of the Year Awards or the Georgia Award after George M Kahan for Variety Performer of the Year some of the past winners include ABBA Best Vocal Group of the Year Vocal Group of the Year in 1980 
Barbara Streisand, she received multiple awards. Sonny and Cher, they have multiple awards as well. And what's really interesting is when you look at their numbers here. So their membership has significantly dropped um, since the 2000s. What's interesting is that this, it says, oh, that, now I understand. Okay, so I'm looking at this chart and I'm looking at their numbers. So they've got like three different charts going on here to represent this. So it says as of 2014, they have 2,624 members. We know that. But um, at, at 2000, year 2000, they had like 4,000 members. So it, it dropped. It's been dropping since then. And it hasn't really come back up. But what's interesting is, is that their membership has significantly dropped. However, their, their assets have gone up tremendously. Like there's been a big spike, I think, from like the year 2010. It's just gone straight up, like just really skyrocketed. That's really suspicious to me. Because if you have less people in your, if you're, if you're losing members, how can you have so much in assets? Like how, how can you have an increase? See, because here's the thing. They've got a huge increase of assets, but they have a huge decrease of liabilities. And then their, it says here their receipts have kind of gone up, and their disbursements are kind of all over the place in terms of their finances. And this is from, um, I guess, U.S. records documentation of what they are claiming here. But to me, that looks very suspicious because it just doesn't look right. Um, I find that really odd because I would think that if you have less members, if you're losing membership, you should be losing money all across the board. You should be losing assets. You should be losing everything, not going up in one and going down in the other. And then it just really doesn't make sense in terms of their records. I find that very suspicious. But at the same time, I'm kind of not surprised because Hollywood is a little shady. So I would want to know where are these monies coming from and, and why are there, like what is causing their assets to just skyrocket but yet their membership is dwindling? Like it's not doing that well. And also I find it very odd that there's not very many members in this. As of 2014, they have 2,624. That is extremely low if you think about it because look at all the things that they cover. They cover variety entertainment. Well, think about cruise ships and what... You know, performers they have on there. Think about all the performers you have in Las Vegas. Think, think about the performers you have in Branson, Missouri. Think about the performers you have in, in New York City and like all across the United States. Like you can easily have over like three or four thousand members just from variety entertainment. Then you have circuses. You know, I could see circuses that, you know, the, the far left got, got away with getting rid of what's it called, the Ringling Brothers. I love that circus. I don't agree with the cruelty to animals, and I hope that that really was a huge problem. But, you know, circuses, that put a lot of people out of work, big time. And it also affected um, jobs at the fairgrounds. Because here in Oklahoma, we have a state fair every year. It's a really good fair. And we have a lot of people that are kind of migrant workers, I guess, in a way. They're called carnies, or they, they might be that and or gypsies. And so they travel along with these huge circus companies. Well, if you do away with the circus, guess what? Those families no longer have a, a uh, I was going to say a provider, basically. They have no one to provide them with work. So that's one of those things. Because, oh, there's another thing. In terms of circuses, you need to go to, um, is, there's a museum here in Oklahoma. No, 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 it's not Oklahoma. It is in Sarasota, Florida. There's a museum there. It's about the Ringling Brothers, I think, and it's about uh, their circus. They used to employ thousands of people, thousands, okay? That's more than Dell. That's more than Microsoft. I mean, really, like it's, it's just amazing how many people they employed. They kept them fed, and they provided them really good jobs. But, I mean, over time, you had people that they – They did not understand the circus life. They did not understand the carny life. They did not understand the gypsy way of life. And even though I don't have that lifestyle, I know that that is a lifestyle and that is a way of making money. Like, you know, just because I have one particular profession, that doesn't mean other professions are bad and shouldn't be around. As long as they're legal, I say as long as it's legal and moral, I'm fine with it. 
But see, here's the thing. You have a lot of people that they think that they should control other people's wages and jobs and their profession, and that's not right. So that's why we have a dwindling down of circuses. But it's just one of those things. But just think about all the performers, for example, that are in, what's it called, Cirque du Soleil. That, that's tremendous amounts of employees there. They're performing that. They have dancers all over the world. you know their their arena whenever they are performing I've been to one it's been several years when they were here in Oklahoma City but it was phenomenal the work that they did and they had so many performers it was amazing well just imagine if they have that venue in several different locations in the United States that's going to be well over 500 employees if not 1000 so just think about the numbers here so then you have Las Vegas showrooms How many workers do you know of that are in Las Vegas showrooms? Quite a bit. That includes a lot. And then you have cabarets. You have comedy showcases. You have dance reviews, magic shows. Those are kind of going to the wayside. Then you have theme park shows. I never knew that they could be in a union, but they can. Like, there are a lot of theme park shows. Like, if you think about all the theme parks that are located in the United States, and we have quite a few. We have a theme park here in Oklahoma City. Uh, I think it's called Frontier City. And it is a neat place. We really do have a wonderful theme park here. And they do a great job of performing. Like even as a little kid, they were great. And, you know, they have stood the test of time. It's a wonderful theme park. It's one of my favorites. And then it goes on to talk about, you know, the arenas and auditorium extravaganzas. Well, just think about all the people that are performing those things. But yet we see that from this guild, this union, that as of 2014 they only have a little over 2600 members that is pathetically low and we're not even talking about people losing jobs from covid or anything like that but if you think about all the different types of work you have circuses you have Las Vegas showrooms you have cabarets you have comedy showcases dance reviews magic shows theme parks arena and auditorium types of entertainment they call extravaganzas that is nine different types of work minimum minimum and they've only got a little over 2600 members in this union but yet that they, they have a drop in membership but their 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 finances are all over the place and to me it looks kind of shady it looks really shady so i kind of find that odd it just really it, it it's very i don't know it just doesn't make sense it just kind of takes me back a little bit and here's why they've been around since 1939 1939 and they they only have that many members after all these years and hollywood's a, a pretty big place las vegas is a pretty big place new york city is a pretty big place like It doesn't make sense. And I get that some of these unions overlap a little bit, but that's just more or less in jurisdiction type things. So it's just really bizarre to me. So I, I don't think that this is, I don't know how to describe this, but it doesn't seem like it's a real, true and valid union. It just seems like what I talked about in a previous podcast where it just seems like a shell company where it looks like it's real but when you really look into it there's really nothing there. You know, like when I saw their numbers in terms of their finances, it just looks like where they can hide or hoard money. That's what it looks like to me. Like it looks really shady. I don't think this looks right. Um I think it would be an auditor's dream to go through their books on this one. I really do think it would be very interesting to go over this one. But anyway, Um that is it for this podcast. It's a short one. It's short and sweet. So that is good. Sometimes these are long, sometimes they're short, sometimes they're right there in the middle. So let's see what the next one is. So that's the American Guild of Variety. Da 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 da. da. Oh, the next one's probably going to be fun. It's the Guild of Italian American Actors. <laughs> this should be awesome. And I already love their symbol. This is fascinating. Wow. Wow. Ooh, their numbers are very interesting. I'm already looking at this. Okay, so this is going to be a treat to do. Okay. But um, until next time, I pray that you're happy, healthy and whole, and I pray that you have a happy week and a happy day, and thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.